This is me going fishing, me and my dad. I'm driving, because I'm learning how to drive and stuff. I came down this hill and then going on to Long Lake. I go down this hill and uh, when I hit the ice, there's uh, about two feet that uh, ice stays open or the muskrats keep that open. <laughs> and I hit it a little too hard and the car gets out there and then the ice broke all the way around the car and the car went down. Oh, we knew how deep the water was, so we didn't get too excited. It came up through the windows. Well, then we rolled down the windows and uh, we crawled out. But we didn't drive that car that day no more because we had to get it dried out. And that was the end of that fishing trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, as all, you probably all know, my job was a flight engineer on a CH-47 cargo helicopter. I carried stuff from the Delta to the DMZ. I mean, you name it, I probably carried it. I'm pretty proud to say that they picked my aircraft out of, 50, out of 16 aircraft, they picked mine because they trusted me and they trusted my aircraft to pick, pick up one guy you've probably all heard of. I picked up Sammy Davis down at Cameron and my job was to take him so he could put on a show at Da Nang, Maine. And then we flew him up to Fubai, to the 101st, where he put on another show that same day. Then I took him and flew him out to an aircraft carrier out in the South China Sea. I want to tell you, this, this guy was nothing but amazing. I never seen him the entire day without a smile on his face. And after he got done with putting on a show in Da Nang, Maine, the Navy had a radar site 20 miles off the coast. We took and flew him out there. He got on the radio just to say hi to the guy watching the radar. He got outside the steps on the aircraft and was sitting there waving at the guy. <laughs> then he, we closed up the door and then we flew him back out so he could get onto another aircraft to fly him out to this aircraft carrier out in the South China Sea somewhere. Okay, hi, I'm Bill Rao. I joined the Navy at 17 years old. I had a thoughts at one time of trying to be a doctor. And uh, after I realized it was a little tricky to be a doctor, I decided I'd do something else. I chose uh, to go into uh, the core duty. So anyhow, as we moved along and took core duty and all that sort of thing, we were sent to a, a facility where there was a dentist, a doctor, and two corpsmen. I happened to be one of the corpsmen. I don't know why they picked me, but anyhow, they did. We happened to be on duty on a weekend, and somebody came to the gate and said, my wife is going to have a baby. Is hey, there a doctor here? And I said, no, there's a corpsman, and there's also a dentist. So what's your choice? You know, you can imagine a dentist saying there's no teeth in here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. We decided uh, who was going to drive and who was going to do the rest. So the, the, the dentist said to me, I'll drive and you get in the back with the, uh, with the lady that's having the baby. I had never seen the, the backside of her, underside of a lady. You know, I was only 17 years old. I didn't know if it was going to come feet first, uh, head first, or <laughs> what was going to happen here. And with this young lady's help, it did arrive, you know, and it was, it was uh, everything worked fine. And uh, thanks for, to God that it was there in, in his hands and not mine, you know what I mean? It was just one of those things that happened. The dentist said, well, we did it. We got down there at the bottom there. And, he said, yeah, we did it. And I said to him, yeah, you drove down. And he goes, what, what did you say, Carmen? What did you say? <laughs> and I said to him, I said, you did a great job of driving. I realized at that time I was certainly in no position to create one of those things. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm Bill Hannigan. I joined the 82nd Airborne Division and uh, became a paratrooper. We had the largest invasion uh, by parachute troops in the history of the world. We jumped into uh, Holland and uh, attempted to end the war by crossing into Germany. And we, we came to 
Wall River just uh, north of Nijmegen. The river runs north and south. And here over here are the Germans on this side. In the uh, parachute operation included a jump into a town just north of Nijmegen. The British Airborne Division and the Polish Red Dog regiments jumped into a small town where there was another bridge, a bridge too far. Jumped right into a mass of Germans, a, re a retreat area, R&R &R area. And they really butchered them. So what they did, they got the British up here. Mm -hmm. uh, the British on the road here, ready to cross the bridge, but the Germans held the bridge. So they said they must get across that bridge and we've got to take it. They said, well, who are we going to get to do this? Well, the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment. And the time got real short and it was in the afternoon, broad daylight. They put smoke out there, but the wind blowed away, did no good. So we were lined up here <coughs> in canvas boats and mounted the boats, went to the river. Now these represent German entrenchments on the other side of the land. Now the current was so strong that when these boats were hit or some somebody hit, got hit and fell into the river, or the boat turned over after being hit by a shell. The guys would just wash away. There was nothing we could do. We were pedaling even with our butts of a rifle to get it across, you know, because we were scared. Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a fool. I, I knew when to be scared. <laughs> and you talk to God. <laughs> yeah. They had open shots at us. We went across with uh, 28 boats and 11 of them made it across. I was in one of those that made it across. And we were getting out of the boat and uh, John Regapolis, who was in my squad, said, you peed your pants, Bill. And I said, oh no, I didn't. I said, pull out a water canteen with a bullet hole in it, leaked down and wet my pants. After we crossed that river, which was a, a loss of a great many men. But when we crossed this, this was open land from the river to the Germans' in, uh, positions. There was no hiding places for us, so we advanced, loss of a lot of men. I don't know, I think he was looking out for me anyway. Then we went down to the bridge and we, uh, we knocked them out with the loss of a lot of men and we came down to the bridge down south, and we went onto the bridge and crossed it and took the bridge. But then the British, they refused to come. I was so upset myself with the loss of friends. For 50 years, I refused to talk about the war to my four sons and to anybody else. But now after I saw a movie, A Bridge Too Far, and another movie, Saving Private Ryan, and one more movie called The Longest Day. I realized after I saw them, this was bigger than I was. I forgave myself and I shouldn't allow myself to participate in this resentment toward the British. Okay, first of all, my name is Steve McMorris. I'm gonna tell about when my bus, my sister and I was on the bus, we was going to the amusement park, and this guy was sitting up in front of the bus, in front of us, he dropped three coins, there were three pennies fell down. Pennies were worth a lot of money, and my sister told me to get the money and keep it, so I told her, I said, well, no, I just went on and tapped the guy on the shoulder and gave it to him, and he, he held his hand out, and without turning around barely, he said, son, I've been waiting for you. And wherever you go in this world, you always will have three angels. Mm -hmm. So the three angels he gave me, I named Faith, Hope, and Mercy. Mm -hmm. So, so, so. they're in the room now. <laughs>